All right, this is fifth grade, module six, lesson 19. And in this lesson, students are going to be plotting data on line graphs. And then they're going to be looking at the trends. And really, for the homework, mostly what they're going to do is look at the trends, because the, the uh, line plots will already be given to them. So when we're looking at a line plot, some things that we want to do, uh, we want to look for a title. It kind of gives us an idea of what this line plot is going to be about. And then I want to look at the labels on the axes. This lower axis right here, the x-axis, uh, appears to be dates, because it says so, dates. And that's 512, 519, 526. So what I'm guessing is each interval is one day. And the way we would find out is we'd zoom in and we'd count to find out. So if that's 512, as in May 12th, so that's 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Yeah, so each interval stands for one day. And then I'm looking over here, and this number right here stands for 1,000, because it says in thousands. And then up here, this is a 2, so that stands for 2,000s. And since there's, let's see, 1, 2, three, four. There's four intervals in between. This means each one of these intervals stands for $250,000, kind of like a quarter, 25 cents. Uh, only since we're talking about thousands, it's $250 is each interval as we move up. So now, once you understand what the graph is, you can answer any kinds of questions that they give us. So Let's take a look at this one. It says, about how much money does Howard have in his checkbook on May 21st? So the first thing we have to do is figure out, well, where is May 21st? So May 21st, well, if this is 19, that makes this 20, 21. So May 21st is right there, and I'm going to put a little niche there. May 21st. And if we want to see how much money he has, we go straight up, and we notice that the dot is right here, which means then we go over, and we can see it's above $1,000. And we talked about that. It's $1,250 is about how much it looks like he has. It might be exact, but it's hard to tell when the numbers are so large. And it could be off by like a dollar or something like that. So it looks like on the 21st, he had $1,250. And then, of course, you could just continue answering questions. Oh, there's some other questions that you might ask or you might be able to answer. Parents and teachers, some ideas is what happened here? So you can ask your students, you know, what happened? Did the money go up or did it go down? Did he spend money? Did he save money? What kinds of events might have happened that would cause him to suddenly boost his checking account like that, like a payday or something, right? So parents and teachers, let your students tell a story uh, when they're looking at this graph like that. So when I'm looking at this graph, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the title, Santino's Triathlon. I'm going to look at the edges, the legends here. This axis down here is time. And I see that it starts at 1 o'clock. And then it looks like it ends at almost 3 o'clock. So it's not quite two hours. And then the distance is on the side here. It says distance from the finish line. So it looks like what's happening is he starts the race and he's the furthest away from the finish line. And as time is ticking... He is getting closer and closer and closer to the finish line, and he finally reaches the finish line right there. That's kind of what it looks like to me. So the question is, how long does it take Santino to finish the triathlon? Well, he starts at 1 o'clock. At 2 o'clock, he's still traveling. It's not quite two hours. So what we have to do is we have to figure out, well, how long is each of these little intervals? So let's count. So going from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's 6 intervals between each hour. So that means each one of these little intervals stands for 10 minutes. So if we wanted to, we could say, oh, 
So this is 2 hours, or 2 o'clock and 10 minutes, 2 o'clock 20 minutes, 2 o'clock and 30 minutes, and that makes sense, it's right in the middle, 30 minutes, 2 o'clock plus 40 minutes, 2 o'clock plus 50 minutes. So right there is 2 o'clock plus 50 minutes, so it's 2.50 p.m. So the question is, how long did it take him to finish the race? You're not going to say 2 hours and 50 minutes, because he started at 1 o'clock. So he traveled 1 hour plus 50 minutes. So it took him 1 hour and 50 minutes to complete that triathlon. And then you can see uh, some kind of fun questions. It says, to complete the triathlon, Santino swims across the lake. So that's this piece right here. Then he bikes through the city. That's this piece right here. And it's really steep because he's biking. And biking is pretty fast. So he is cutting the distance from uh, between him and the finish line. He's cutting the distance really fast. He's cutting it quickly. And then the last one is he's running. And then this little piece is running around the lake. So according to the graph, what was the distance of the running portion? So we're going to say that, the, uh, wait, where's the running? Uh, swimming, biking, running. Oh, here. Here is the running. And so we can see that running starts here and ends here. So the idea is, wh where does it start? It starts at this marker, this interval right there. And that looks like it's five. So it's five kilometers right there to right there. Five kilometers, because this is the finish line. He's at zero. So it's five kilometers is the running portion. And then the last little question that I'm going to show, it says, during the race, Santino pauses to put on his biking shoes and helmet, and then later to change into his running shoes. At what time do those things occur? So the idea is when he stops to put on shoes or stops to take off shoes, he's not making any progress. So when the line is slanted like this, that means he's making progress. He is cutting the distance between him and the finish line. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for two little flat spaces, one right here and one right here. And what's happening at those two flat spaces? means time is ticking, but he's not making any progress to the finish line. And so those are the two times that he likely was putting on his biking shoes and then putting on his running shoes. And that wraps up 5th grade, Module 6, Lesson 19. It says plot data, but we didn't really plot data for this homework assignment. Really what we did was we just analyzed the data that was already given to us.